Ja, det kommer att komma. Ja, det är inte så. Jag måste ställa alla på det. Stå på det här jobbet. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم، الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد عليه أفضل الصلوات وأتم التسليم ثم أما بعد. If you want to destroy a society, start with women. If you want to build society, start with women. If society has several pillars, women would possibly be the strongest, biggest, most important pillar of society be the backbone of society. One poet said, الأم مدرسة إذا أعددتها أعددت شعبا طيب الأعراقي. A poet once said, a mother in particular, out of all women, because mothers could be aunties, they could be sisters, they could be wives, they could... The mother in particular is an institution, an educational institution that if you prepare her well, you build a very moral society, community. I'm going to share with you a few examples from our Muslim history, a few examples of women who have helped shape and develop and build society, Muslim society. The Prophet ﷺ said, the best of the women of Al-Jannah are four. Khadija bint Khuwaylid, Fatima bint Muhammad, his daughter, Asya bint Muzahim, the wife of Fir'aun, and Maryam ibn Imran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of them. Those are the best four women of Al-Jannah. And if they are the best four women of Al-Jannah, they are the best four women of Ad-Dunya. And if they are the best four women for us Muslims, they would be the best four role models that we, men as well as women, but in particular women, in particular mothers, should look up to and try to teach their children, male and female, to be like them. Asya bint Zahim, Asya, the wife of Fir'aun, she said that this is an ayah, Ya Allah, Build me a house in the Jannah and rid me of Fir'aun and his bad deeds. She preferred that all of the wealth, all of the kingship that she had, being the wife of Fir'aun, go away. She preferred a Jannah over that. Fatima bint Rasulullah the wife of Ali ibn Abi Talib, one of the best women of Al Jannah. She used to, she used to grind seeds. She used to grind the seeds with the manual grinder. She used to sweep the house and clean her own house herself. Who is this? The daughter of the Prophet ﷺ. One of the best women of Al Jannah. One of the best women of Al Dunya. She complained to her husband about the hardship, the tasks that she had to do at the, in, in her household. So Ali ibn Abi Talib mentioned it to the Prophet and the Prophet told her, Fatima, Ya Fatima, Ittaqillah, be pious towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ittaqillah Ya Fatima, and do what your father does. Ittaqillah ya Fatima. This is what Fatima Zahra radiallahu anha wa alayha salam bintu Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam zawjatu Ali ibn Abi Talib. When Ibrahim alayhi salam was blessed with a son, Ismail alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam to migrate from Palestine to Mecca. 
No people, no water, no food, no plants, nothing. An infant, a mother. They all migrated from Palestine to Mecca. And when they reached Mecca, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Ibrahim alayhi salam to leave his son, the infant, and leave his wife, Hajar, to leave them in Mecca and go back to Palestine. So he obeyed. Hajar was perplexed. She couldn't understand. So she followed Ibrahim. And she kept saying, how could you do this to us? There are no people, there is no food, there is no water, there are no plants. We're going, to, we're going to die basically over here. How could you do this to us? And then she, listen to this question. Did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala order you to do this? So he replied and he said, yes. And listen to her reply when she understood that it was an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She said, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered you to do this, then he will not neglect us, then we are going to be okay. In the previous lecture I gave, I spoke about Umm Umar. Umm Umar, the daughter of the woman who used to sell milk. And she asked her daughter, she ordered her daughter to mix the milk with the water. And her daughter refused to do that. Umm Umara refused to cheat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Umm Umara refused to cheat Umar ibn al-Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen. Umm Umara refused to cheat the Muslims. Umm Umara was the great-grandmother of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. This is how you build great men. This is how you build great leaders. By first building what? Great mothers. Safiya bint Abdul Muttalib, she is the aunt of Muhammad السلام, our prophet. She is the mother of Az Zubair ibn al Awam. She raised her son, Az Zubair ibn al Awam, to be what? To be a tough man, to be a tough leader, to be a just leader, to be a mujahid. Az Zubair ibn al Awam, he participated in all the battles with the Prophet Muhammad. Asma bint Abi Bakr al-Siddiq. She is the wife of Az-Zubayr ibn Awam radiallahu She is the mother of Abdullah ibn Zubayr radiallahu Asma bint Abi Bakr al-Siddiq. She taught her son Abdullah to be like his father Az-Zubayr. She was tough on him. And when she was asked why she was being tough on her son Abdullah, she replied simply that I want him to be a man like his father, as zubayr Umm Ayman radiallahu anha, she was the babysitter of a Nabi, Muhammad wasalam, one of the first mu'minat, mujahidat, one of the mujahidat, the women, who participated in all of the Muslim battles with the Prophet wasalam, And she was at Uhud. She used to give water to the Muslims. She used to the wounded, she would care for them. Her, her husband is Zayd ibn Haritha. Her son, Usama ibn Zayd ibn Haritha. And if you remember this name, Usama ibn Zayd, he was, be, he was giving charge of a Muslim army to go fight the Romans when he was less or younger than 20 years of age. You know who was under his leadership? Usama ibn Zayd? Under his leadership were Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, Umar ibn Khattab, and Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah. Some of the greatest leaders in Muslim history were put under the leadership of Usama ibn Zayd. Because how he was raised by his mother and by the Sahaba and by the Prophet Tamadr ibn Amr ibn al-Harith al-Salamiyyah al-Khansa. She was a poet. She was a strong woman who raised her children to be strong men, strong leaders. And when the call for battle was made, she sent all her children to Ma'arakat al-Qadisiyya. Later she heard that all of her children, four of them, 
perished in Ma'arakat al-Qadisiyya. You know what she did? Did she cry? No. Did she tear up her clothes? No. Did she start slapping her face and smacking herself and saying, Why, Ya Allah? No. Listen to what she said. She said, Alhamdulillah, الذي شرفني باستشهادهم وإني أسأل الله أن يجمعني معهم في مستقر رحمته Alhamdulillah, I praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He has given me the blessings of their shahada and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gathers me with them in Al-Jannah Have you heard of Khansa of Palestine? Latifa Abu Hamid Ibn Nasir, Khansa of Palestine, Maryam Muhammad Yusuf Ibn Hassan Farhat, Umm Nidal Farhat. Have you heard of Khansa of Palestine, Fatima Al Jazzar, Umm Rudwan? Those are the mothers that raise great leaders, that raise tough leaders, that raise tough warriors. Those are the mothers. Umar ibn Khattab once stood on the minbar and said that we should not be extreme and extravagant when it comes to the dowry given to women. That we should have a cap on it, a limit. So an old woman stood up and she asked Umar, based on what? Where did you come up with this? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran al-Kareem says, وَإِنْ أَرَدْتُمْ إِسْتِبْدَالَ زَوْجًا مَكَانَ زَوْجٍ وَآتَيْتُمْ إِحْدَاهُنَّ قِنْطَارًا Qintara means in Arabic a lot. A lot of money, a lot of wealth, a lot of whatever it is that should give them as a dowry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows this and you, Ya Umar, you want to put a cap on it? You want to put a limit on it? You know what Umar ibn Khattab said? The most feared man at that time, he said, Akhta'a Umar wa asabat al ajuz. Umar ibn Khattab was mistaken and this old woman was right and he backed down. Amir al-Mu'mini Umar ibn Khattab. Umar ibn Tulharith al-Shaybani, she is giving her daughter on her wedding night, her daughter's wedding night, advice. She says that you are leaving your normal environment that you grew up with, that you are familiar with, and you go into a foreign environment at your husband's place. Let me give you some advice. Be a maid to him, he will be your servant. Be a servant to him, he will be your slave. She said ten things. Ya bunayati, ten things, O oh daughter. Ten things to always keep in mind. Be satisfied with whatever He can provide to you. Be obedient, listen to Him. Be sure that He doesn't lay His eyes on anything that He doesn't like, or He hears anything that He dislikes, or He smells anything from you that He dislikes. Be sure that if He is asleep because He's tired, make sure that the whole house is calm for him to be sound asleep, to enjoy his sleep, take care of his money, take care of his children, raise them righteous. Do not disobey him for anything that is under the rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And never ever be happy when he's sad or smile when he's sad. And never ever be sad when he is happy. Great advice from a good mother to her daughter. A wife is given advice or asking her husband on his way out to work. She says to him, Be pious, be pious. Do not feed us except from halal. And do not bring anything into our household that is haram. Because we can sustain the fire of hunger, but we cannot sustain the fire of Hell. Those are the women. Some of the few, very few, very few examples of great women that have lived in Islamic history that raised the best generations, the generations that ruled justly, that ruled the world justly.
This is the importance of mothers. Compare this to what we have today. Women today, some women who call themselves Muslims, they call for what? The right of nudity for women. Women who advocate women for them to decide to do whatever they want to do with their own bodies because this is my own right. It's my body. Women who demand prostitution to be legal in Muslim land. Women who demand zina not to be outlawed and punishable by law. And you know what's really, really interesting? That those women are in positions of power, in ministries, in governments, Muslim governments in Muslim land. Women who demand inheritance, inheritance to be equally divided by male and female. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْمُنْثَيَيْنِ that the male inherits twice as much as the female. They want to make it what? Equal. Women, women who want to give the khutbah on Jum'ah. Women who want to give the khutbah on Jum'ah and they want to lead men in prayer. Women who want to ban the hijab in Muslim land. And we have women who want to be leaders and they want to be in charge of men. Have you heard of this ridiculous announcement by the Egyptian dictator not too long ago announcing that a belly dancer is the mother, role mother of the year in Egypt? Look at the women in the past and look at the women here today. And you can figure out why things are like they are. Jazakumullah khairan wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.